My name is Andrea Romero Fanton. I'm a PhD student at Structural Modeling and Monitoring Laboratory, University of Campinas, Campinas, Brazil, and I'm going to present to you the paper Fire Performance of Rainforested Concrete Slabs, a Numerical Analysis. And the other authors are Luis Carlos de Almeida and Leandro Mota Troutwein, PhD professors from the University of Campinas, Campinas, Brazil. Here we see the presentation topics, an introduction, a numerical modeling, a numerical simulation, the results, and the final conclusions. So let's get started through the introduction, context, and objectives of this paper. Why should we study structures in fire? Why we really need to understand the behavior of all the materials when in case of fire? because we need to guarantee the security of the structures. So the main objective here is a numerical analysis of thermomechanical behavior of RC slabs in fire through finite element modeling. And the specific objectives are an antenna and guide modeling, a model calibration, and a parametric analysis from the aggregates. Now the literature reveal some tests, fire curves, concrete, and steel behavior. The fire curves used in this paper were ISO H34 time temperature fire curve, represented by this equation, and hydrocarbon time temperature fire curve, represented by this equation. And here we see the difference between the ISO curve, the continuous one, and the hydrocarbon curve, the other one. And now, just a summary of existing data on RC structures in fire modeled in Athena. Now we will see the numerical modeling developed in this paper. The softwares used in this research were for pre-processing GIT and Athena using the modes transport and static, and for post-processing, Athena Studio was used. The finite elements adopted in this paper were concrete, CC isobrick, represented by this picture, and for the reinforcement, the CC bar with bond, represented here. The numerical simulation, the calibration of the model and the steps done. This research was based on Ali's results. Experimental and numerical models were studied in three steps. The first one is a numerical the first step was to analyze the mechanical behavior of the slab under normal conditions at room temperature. The second step was the thermal behavior of the slab in fire situation. And first step three, a thermomechanical behavior of the slab in a fire situation. Here we have the geometry and the reinforcement of the slab analyzed in this paper. The temperatures were measured at three depths in Ali et al. The bottom surface, the reinforcement position, and 100 mm from bottom surface. The average concrete cup strength was 42 MPa. The parameters for slab load, it was considered 65% of the design load. It was applied in mid-span point and the time temperature fire curves were ISO 834 and the hydrocarbon fire curve. Alice's numerical model was done in software Diana. Now the steps of this research, this Athena numerical analysis. The first thing was to combine a static model with thermal model. Then we have thermomechanical models. So let's start through static model. We need the geometry, boundary conditions, load, FE mesh, and the materials. After that, we 
we need to validate the model. With the static model validated, we can go to the thermal model. Again, we need the geometry, thermal load, F image, and the materials. And now we need to analyze two fire curves, ISO 834 and hydrocarbon fire curve. For each one, we will analyze the node temperature and validate the thermal model. With this validated thermal model, we combine to have the thermomechanical models and we go from the transport analysis to a static analysis. Step 1. Here you have the geometry for the first situation, room temperature, the boundary conditions, and the finite element mesh. The final model had 31,422 nodes and more than 6,000 exaedric elements. Here the concrete is the reinforcement model considered in Athena. And now step 2, the thermal model for a situation. The geometry here in thermal model we don't have the reinforcement, just the concrete. The applied loads were fire boundary for surface, ISO 834 fire curve, and hydrocarbon fire curve. And here we see a difference in the convection. For the hydrocarbon fire curve, it is bigger. The concrete model, the material properties for this, the initial value, the default, and the adjusted value based on Ali's research. Step 3, the thermomechanical model. Load interval, the loads were taken as bed load, applied load, and thermal load. The thermal model data from step 2 were imported into the static model, the step 1. Same geometry from static model, and the same mesh and same boundary conditions. The materials here, now we have the material with temperature depth properties. The final results for thermal model validation. We had three monitoring points, the bottom surface, the reinforcement, and the center of the slab. And now the thermal model validation. Here for ISO 834 fire curve, the temperature in the bottom surface. Here we have temperature in function of the time in minutes. The temperature in the reinforcement position the same way, temperature in function of time and the temperature in the slab center. Again, temperature and time. And here we have a summary of all those positions. Now the thermal model validation for hydrocarbon fire curve. Again, bottom surface, the same way temperature and time. We see a big difference here in the beginning of the analysis. The temperature in the reinforcement position and the temperature in the slab center. Finally, a summary for the hydrocarbon analysis. Now the thermomechanical model. The analysis was done analyzing the bottom surface temperature, vertical displacement, and parametric analysis of the aggregates. So let's see here the displacement at the mid-span of the slab. For ISO 834 fire curve, here we have the displacement and the time in minutes for ISO 834 fire curve. And here, an image from Athena. Here we see that for this fire curve, we found a 36 millimeters of displacement. The temperature in the bottom surface, here another picture from Athena. And now for the hydrocarbon curve, the same analysis. Here a picture from Athena, analyzing the displacement. We see here a 62.9 millimeters of displacement. The temperature in the bottom surface, 
And finally, the parametric analysis. The calcareous aggregate and the siliceous aggregate were considered. Both models we have available in Athena software. The relative compressive strength of the concrete. So let's see the displacement found. For ISO 834 fire curve, we see that for siliceous aggregate, we have a bigger displacement. And the same thing for hydrocarbon fire curve, for both types of aggregates. The comparison between both of them, the siliceous one and the calcareous one, for both fire curves. The displacements were bigger for hydrocarbon fire curve. Here we see for the ISO 834 fire curve a displacement of 30 of 36.2 millimeters. And for hydrocarbon, we had 62.9 millimeters. From the parametric analysis, we see that for siliceous aggregate, it developed a worse behavior in both time temperature curves analyzed. For ISO A34 fire curve, the displacement was 47% bigger for siliceous aggregate than for calcareous aggregate. And for a hydrocarbon fire curve, this difference was 58%. So here I would like to thank LabiMan, my laboratory, Unicamp, my university, CNPq, CAPES, and Estecamp Research. So again, my name is Andrea Romero Fanton. I am a PhD student at University of Campinas, Campinas, Brazil. Thank you.